Hello, hello. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. This is Anna Mungia talking about unplanned pregnancies, turn, turn chaos and despair into the best thing that ever happened to you. I talk about unplanned pregnancies and first time moms. Why? Because I want to help you. I want to be there for you to help you in your process. So today I'm going to talk about my second unplanned pregnancy. If you haven't heard the first one, you can go back to the to look for it because it's already uploaded. So my second unplanned pregnancy, the story is like this. After I had the miscarriage of my first unplanned pregnancy, that was in March, and I accepted marriage, as I told you in that video, and I got married in May. Now, confession here. With my old boyfriend, I had always talked about that we were going to get married in May. And here I am getting married in that month with another guy. Mm, that was a secret. Whoops, I said it already. I don't know doesn't matter they're not gonna watch here anyway so I get married to this guy I do not love and preparing that marriage I had I said I was not gonna get married by the church just by the law because I knew I could not make a promise to God for something I was gonna break I knew I was gonna break I knew I was getting married to get divorced check that one out how dumb huh but i knew i was going to do that and i had planned it already because i was a very moral person yes i have received christ when i was 17 but i didn't know how to be how to be a christian i didn't know how to give my life to god i didn't know how how to have god guide my steps and this is why I was doing all the decisions myself with my soul and my brain, not with my heart and God in my heart. I was deciding it all. So I was trying to make the best out of it. And I thought that since I had been pregnant to that guy, I had to get married to him so that people would not sign up to me and refer to me to Anna, the one that was pregnant of, but to sign to me and say, Anna, the one that was married to so-and-so. Is that stupid or what? Nobody knew I had been pregnant. I mean, I never showed a tummy because I lost it in the first trimester. So I never showed. So it was just something that I knew here. And I thought that everybody was going to know. That's how we feel. Like everyone is looking at us and everyone is going to do, say something about it. But nobody knows until you say it. So calm down with your pregnancy. Nobody's looking at you yet. You're just trying to figure out how to handle it. Right? So don't worry. I'm here for you. I'm going to help you go through your process. Don't worry, I'm here for you. Finally, there's an adult that wants to help you. Yes, the adult I never found. Anyway, so we still make the plans of the wedding. So since I'm getting married only by the law, we're gonna make a dinner that my dad was gonna pay for that I'm making my dad pay for a dinner of some, but something that I'm not going to pursue forever. And I had bought this dress, beautiful dress, but it was gray color. Okay. I bought it gray. You were going to say, you're going to ask why gray if you're going to be a bride. I was not a happy bride. I was a, I was in depression i was doing something i didn't want to do but there was nobody to tell me that i had not i did not have to do it okay and then yes i had somebody that told me that they came over to my room one day i remember they came to my room they who is they 
my mom with his hus with her husband came over and told me he told me that I didn't have to get married. I didn't want him to tell me. I mean, he was nothing to me. He had stolen my mom for me, for my understanding. And I didn't want him to tell me what to do, tell me what to do him. He had no say in my things. I wanted my mother to tell me or my father to tell me or somebody, at an aunt or, or my brother or somebody in my family, but not him. So I got into rebellious mode. I was rebellious. I, was, I had to do the contrary to everybody. And this is what also added to my decision. I wanted to get out of my mom's house. I didn't want to live with her. Why? Because she was married to my father's best friend. Yep, that's why. And so my parents split it and my mom gets married to the best friend of my father's best friend so for me he was the victim my dad was the victim and then my father gets married six months later so i'm in all this messed up condition of my family it messed me up definitely messed my soul up that thing that happened in my household so i'm living with my mother because i had no place to live I can't pay a, a place to live, for, to, by, to live by myself at this point. I'm just starting to work. I wanted to get independent. But my way out of the house was to get married. So I did. Reason number one, I had been pregnant with, of that guy. Reason number two, I wanted to get out of my house. Reason number three, I was a rebellious. Reason number four, I wanted to get divorced after getting married. I don't know. I was just messed up. Nobody to talk about. That's the same thing that I'm telling. So I have this gray dress for my wedding. And then one of I don't know what the adults talked about during that season. And I don't know what happened, but my aunt, beautiful aunt I have, she sent me a a white dress, beautiful white dress. Well, it was not, it was like beige type of white, like off white type of color. Because probably somebody said, Anna is gonna get married in a gray dress. She can't get married in a gray dress. She had needs a white dress. And then one of my aunts volunteered to send me a dress. And I was number seven, I was wearing eight, seven, eight type of dresses that was my size and because my aunt sent it and i liked the dress that's what i put on me but see that was like a sign that i have if they would be more observant of the girl my mom would have known that i didn't want to get married and she could have come close to me and talked to me she did, didn't she didn't touch the subject she knew i was upset with her because of how she came out with my first pregnancy so i get married in a white off-white dress and while i'm signing the paper of marriage accepting that marriage i am weeping i am crying and crying you know how brides cry when they get married because they're so happy no i was crying because i knew i was blowing up my life i was gambling my life knowing i was not going to last a long time with him but see i didn't go to counseling no i did go to counseling i didn't go to pastoral counseling because i didn't have a pastor i had received christ but i haven't had any discipleship i didn't know anybody to talk to i didn't have a pastor to go and tell my true self and my confess my sin and tell him i didn't want to be there i went to a psychologist that i knew from before so yes i went to ask for help i went to a psychologist i had forgotten about this and now i'm remembering and i go to her and i tell her listen i'm confused and she goes why and I tell her a little bit of my story 
of the guy, how I met this guy, but I didn't tell her about my love story of the other guy I had left because she didn't ask, so I didn't say it. But see, this is how psychologists have to be more resourceful into digging into our souls and ask questions, but she didn't. All she said was, what don't you like about the guy? I'm like, well, he's Catholic and I'm not. She goes, what are you? And I said, I don't even know. I just, no, I, I don't want to be Catholic anymore. I don't know. I was just like confused with that part too. Like I'm in confusion stage all, all the time. Anyway, and does he drink? He goes, and I said, eh, little, not much. He's social drinker. Does he smoke? And I go, no, I don't accept smokers. He goes, is he good? Is he professional? I go, yeah, he just graduated from college. So what are you, what are you looking for? He, she asked. She never asked me if I loved him, if why I was getting, considering him. I skipped the fact that I had been pregnant of him. I didn't say that secret either because that was my secret to nobody know about it ever. So when she said, what are you waiting for and what are you looking for? I said, hmm, the guy isn't a bad guy. He isn't a bad guy. I just didn't love him. And I blew up, I messed up. And I still married him. Anyway, so I'm going to enter the wedding and I'm here dressed up with my new off-white dress. My father picks me up. Now remember my dad and my, and my mom are not in the same house, so they're in different houses, but still my father comes to pick me up to my mom's house, which is where I'm getting out from. And we're going to this club where he had paid for this dinner, this wedding dinner for me. And the lights go off before getting into the, into the, the club. And the lights go off. And kidding you not, I start thinking like in the novels that I was the running away bride and that I was flying out of the scene and that I didn't want to be there. And this was my way out. I really thought about that, but I did not get the guts to tell my dad. And it started raining. And I was like, oh my Lord. No, I didn't say, oh my Lord. Definitely I didn't say that. I would have gone out away. But because I felt bad that my dad had spend that money in getting all the guests there. I mean, all my family from his side was there and a few of my family and only family are like 150 people. And he was paying for that. And I just felt so bad to leave the people there and just going out. Isn't that stupid? I mean, we should just react more into our gut and do what we really want. Again, he didn't ask me, darling, do you really, really want to get married to him? No, he didn't. But I swear when the lights went off, I, in a split second, I thought about the novels or the movies that the bride leaves the groom there. And I didn't do that. Well, I get in, I get married, and then it's honeymoon time. He has no money to pitch in, and I didn't want to give my money to, because I was the one working with a good job. He didn't have a job yet. Guess that. I mean, that's another sign that I shouldn't get married. Put your things together first, and both of, the, of you working or have, a, have a jobs or have a business or something. But no, I get married to this guy that doesn't have a job, and I'm earning good money and then he finds a shitty job oops sorry uh not so good job that he was earning half of what i was earning oh my lord see all the messed up things i'm telling all this to help you to decide good because i messed up good messed up anyway so i honeymoon was 
going to a beach club in local place, into a very local place, and we that we got a a cheap place to go. That was not something I had imagined in my growing up years. I had dreamed of this honeymoon somewhere like you going to Europe or going into a cruise or having a nice honeymoon but I had a really horrible honeymoon you know this beach place I mean we have beautiful places back home but it was not like my ideal place to be and we had to do it because that's the thing that you have to do after getting married right having a honeymoon so we did go for this for a weekend because since I had just started to work, all I had off was three days. So I had to go back to work. I only had one month working. I mean, I only had five months by this time working in this place. So I couldn't get a whole week or two weeks off. So we go back and then I tried. I tried to make this thing work. I really did because then I thought, okay, so I decided to marry this guy. Nobody pushed me into it. Nobody forced me into it. God didn't choose him for me. I chose my steps. So now I have to make it work. So I started reading books about love and how to make it work and all that stuff. And I tried, I tried to look at this guy with a love look. And he's okay. He's good. He's a good man. I'm not going to talk bad about him because he's a good man. He didn't hit me ever. He didn't shout at me ever. He was just a guy next to me. We were sharing a room. And of course, the intimate part of our relationship was not good at all. We never could understand each other. I felt mad inside of me that I had to get married to him because of what had happened. I always had this resentful soul towards him. Like if I didn't accept it. I mean, I'm 100% responsible of my acts. You have to understand we are responsible of what decisions we take. And the guy goes as far as we let them go. So I was responsible, but I was resentful of him because of it. And we never had a good understanding in that area at all. So I was in a birth control. Definitely, I was not going to get pregnant again, I said. So I said. I was taking care of myself and we were not having too many encounters anyway. So it was easy to take care of myself and I was uh, having my birth control. But then my body started to react with, to that birth control. And then I told my doctor, my gynecologist, I go to him and tell him, listen, I need to change my birth control because this and this is happening. My period is getting irregular. And I'm getting my period like for 10, 12 days instead of eight, because I had it for eight days. And he said, okay, when you get your period, you come to my, to my office. I'm like, okay, next period, I'm going to come up. But I'm going to take you off from this, from this birth control, and I'm going to put you this in the next birth control when you come. Okay. I said, okay. So there was like one week there that I did not have birth control in my body. And you know how people say that if you take the pill like for too long, you have to let it get out of your body. And then while it gets out of your body, you cannot get pregnant. Well, I believe that lie. And I was in the pill and that wasn't working for me. And guess what? That week span, we have had like probably weeks without anything. And for some reason, I felt sorry for the guy and I'm the wife and the wife is supposed to serve the man in that area. 
So because I was trying to make it happen, I let him once more. And what happened? I get pregnant. I'm so fertile. Hello. Oof. Now, at this point in the marriage, we have like a, a, a year and a half together. And we were already talking about a little bit about getting separated because it's not working and it's, this is not going to be a happy marriage and we deserve better. He deserves better and I deserve better. And we were talking about that. At the same time, we're trying to make it happen, to make it work. You know how couples, we do that and try to save the marriages and we just try to do things right and then you think no this is not going to work but then you let's let's try well in that yes and no i get pregnant oh no at this point i'm not working in the multinational because i had left there because it was not, it was a temporary job so i went to a national um company um and they hired me for the same salary, which I shouldn't have not accepted, but I did. And I was happy there. But the problem was that in that place, they hired me for one position. And when I get there, when I present myself to that company, that position is already taken by somebody else. Supposedly, the, the, the guy that hired me was going to get out this other guy and was going to give me that position but he never did because this guy was good what he was doing and he never found a way to get to kick him out so i'm here hired to a new position that there's no position for me so i start working in whatever i could help in that company because i didn't know what to do i i had i didn't have a position so i started working in maintenance they were expanding really fast it was a computer company that was expanding in the 80s very fast and they were growing so they were going from a small space to a huge space and so somebody had to supervise how that construction was going and that's when i started going into interior decoration and so i decided well i was i was hired to be in the in in the um what is it in the education department because i love to teach as you can see i love to teach and i was i was hired for that but the position was taken so i decided to be the supervisor of the construction because i would like to go out not be in a cubicle all day so i decided to help in that and my boss was happy because he had no time to start going going up and down so i just gave him the report and that's how I became the public relations person and in charge of the marketing. And I got into marketing there and, the, and got to do the deals with the, with the uh, advertising company and supervising the construction. And I got into something that I was not hired for, but I did marketing and advertising and supervision of the construction. So I'm working in this place and now I'm getting, I get pregnant with my second daughter. Now, why I tell you this back story is because while I was working there and my boss started to get like really, I don't know, weird. Everything I did was wrong. Every email, every letter that I would write for him to approve, to send for the advertising company, for example, he would disapprove everything I did. She said it was wrong. It was do it again, do it again. I don't know why he got it against me. I started hating this guy. I just didn't like it. I just was not feeling good there. And here I am pregnant of a baby I did not plan. And I had nobody to tell again. Why? Because I was married. I was supposed to be in a happy marriage because I know how to wear a lot of masks. Oh yes, wearing masks is my specialty. So I put my mask of happy marriage and I was like, Mrs. So-and-so. And 
people believed that I was happy, but I was inside was really unhappy, really, really unhappy. And so we start getting a lot of friction with my boss and he ends up sending me to the bodega part. You know, where the computers are fixed to the warehouse and where the fixing parts are and where the computer nerds are, where they fix the things. From having a beautiful office with AC to a place with, with no AC and with people that are not of my standard of intelligence. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to diminish them at all, but I mean, I wasn't hired for that, but he sent me there and I was having a big turmoil with my unplanned pregnancy. I was having problems of communication with my husband because I wasn't happy and I was again um, getting into attacking internally, blaming him, blame, that's a word, blaming him that I got pregnant again. I mean, tell you, I'm too fertile and his sperms are too good. I don't know, but I got pregnant twice by this guy by only one time stand there and I know it, it was only that time because the rest of the month I didn't let him touch me and for the rest of our marriage I did not let him touch me because I didn't like him I was blaming everything on him I just didn't like it and I cried my pregnancy all by myself I couldn't tell my mother because the way how she reacted with the first met with the first pregnancy Besides, they knew I was this marriage was not gonna last too long, and I had already gone after the a year and a half with him, and they thought I was not gonna last a year. They should have told me this, you know. I would have gotten divorced before, but anyway, my unplanned pregnancy is here, and I I'm a happy married woman. So, oh my lord, after work. I would go to this place where I would go. I used to go with my grandfather when I was four years old. And I would just park there, going back to my childhood years. And I would cry and cry by myself. This time telling God, why are you sending this baby to my life when you know, when you know, that I'm getting a divorce. How about that one? I mean, I'm blaming God that created my baby and I'm blaming my husband for my baby. And I have part in this too. I have the responsibility too of my acts. At the time I didn't get it. So I just cried my whole pregnancy in silence. Again, in silence, again, I felt lonely. I felt in a turmoil. I felt uncertainty. I felt um, shame. I felt like a very stupid girl. Why did this happen to you again? And you know what? Statistics say that a teen pregnant mom is going to get pregnant again. Or a young adult mom is going to get pregnant again unplanned, both, two or three times. Statistics say that one out of two pregnancies is unplanned. How about that one? One out of two pregnancies is unplanned. And by unplanned, can be unwedded, it can be wedded, it can be in a good relationship, it can be in a bad relationship, it can be a one-night stand, it can be a long relationship of long times a long period of sexual activity you could get pregnant anyway but one out of two pregnancies is unplanned statistics say also that girls that go for one abortion most likely will make another abortion they make two in their lifetime sad because those are babies 
anyway, so this is what I what happened. This is how I got into my pregnancy. I cried my whole pregnancy. And the consequences were very bad into my baby. And that's going to be into another video because this is getting too long. So for now, this is how was how my second unplanned pregnancy happened and how unhappy I was crying out my baby while I was pregnant with nobody to talk about it. My baby suffered from rejection because I rejected her and I, I, I gave it to her, to her, my rejection of the pregnancy, I sent it to her. And I am really repentful. And I tell the baby so much, so many times that I love her and love her and love her that I cannot even count them. But I'm going to tell you more about the birth of that baby because I had problems. It was an emergency C-session. And I'm going to talk all about the, what happened during that um, pregnancy period and how I made her suffer because I did not give her a good calm um, place or situation while she was growing up in me. So it's very important that we as pregnant girls decide to embrace our baby and nurture her, nurture him or her, because otherwise we pass them all our emotions all our turmoil is passed to the baby. Our rejection is passed to the baby. Uh, if we are talking bad about against the, the father, we pass it to the baby. Everything about that. So I'm going to talk about that in my next video when I talk about the, how that um, birth part was. And I hope this has helped you in any way. If you want to share this video if you're going to help somebody else or send somebody to the youtube channel i appreciate it i'm here to help you i am going i want to be your mom anna your aunt anna auntie anna or you're just your friend the adult you need in your life to go through this season and everything is going to be okay and I go into the details just to let you know the things that happen in an unplanned pregnancy when you do not embrace the baby and you do not have the support system, which I didn't have. It was just me and him, period. And we would just fight ourselves. And nobody else outside of us knew the turmoil that we had in our marriage and how unhappy we were because we were both unhappy and so this is going to be up to here i hope it has helped you and you like it and come back to see my next episode please subscribe ring the bell and ask me of any subjects that you would like me to touch around these subjects of the pregnancy, first time pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy, relationships. I'm going to talk about um, leadership skills, how to be a better mom, motherhood. I'm going to talk about many subjects, but right now the first ones are my stories. So you know me and you can go back into the channel and look my story and learn from it. So this is how my second unplanned pregnancy went and soon to come the birth because i gave birth to this baby and she is my light thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next one bye bye